What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. Imagine you have two tables of data and you need to join them together and do some filtering, maybe even transform some of the values from you know zeros in the database to yeses or noes in your output. Where would you do all those transformations? Would you do it in the SQL query or would you do it in your application code? In today's video, that's what I want to talk about. Today's video is sponsored by Popsicle. More on them in a minute, but first I wanna start diving into some of the pros and cons of putting our data transformation code into our SQL query. We'll get into our application code in a minute as well. Um, so one of the big first advantages is all the optimizations available, right? Different database engines, right, that run SQL queries, a lot of them have been a lot around for a long time and you know, you know, software engineers have spent decades performance tuning, uh, you know, the various algorithms, the sorting algorithms, the join algorithms um, to ensure that they will run fast when you submit a query to them. And so, you know, by putting your different data transformation logic into your SQL query, you kind of reap the benefits of all that work that went into making those optimizations. And sure, there's probably some cases where you can write more optimal code yourself in your application um, to do something that SQL can do. But you know, in most general cases, it's probably gonna be faster and easier to just let you know, the database engine handle that for you. So the next reason you maybe wanna put your data transformation logic into your SQL queries is because that data may already exist in a sorted order in the database. Um, lots of different operations like joins and filtering, right, require sorted data, or at least they work a lot faster with sorted data. So just like it's easy to find a book in the library because you know, the books are in a, a specific order, um, same thing with, with a you know, SQL database. Uh, the engine will be able to find the data it needs and perform the operations it needs a lot easier if that data is stored sorted. And of course, I'm talking about indexes on the database are the mechanism that allow um, you know, a database engine to retrieve your data in a sorted order, in a pre-sorted order, right, to make lots of different operations faster. Another reason you may want to put your data transformation logic into the SQL query itself is to reduce the amount of data that is sent across the network. Network speeds tend to be one of the biggest bottlenecks uh, when moving data between your database server and your application server, whether that's a website or if it's you know, on a client or anything like that. You wanna avoid having to send large amounts of data because in general, network speeds are slow compared to everything else anyway. If you let your SQL engine handle joining your data and filtering it down, right? Maybe your database has 100 million records, but once you filter it down to maybe 10 records, right? It's gonna be a lot faster to send those 10 records over the network than trying to send all 100 million records to your application, having your application filter it out then. This is particularly relevant nowadays with you know, lots of people working from home. Um, and if you're on a slow connection, either a home connection, or maybe you're on a slow VPN connection for your work, right? reducing the amount of data that you send back from a query um, is gonna have an even bigger impact on how well that query performs and, and how quickly your application can do whatever it needs to do. So you know, putting that reduction logic into your query is, is often a good thing. All right, moving right along, another thing you may wanna consider is the hardware that your queries are running on. Um, I don't know what it's like in your scenario, but in my scenario, my, my database servers t are typically a lot beefier, a lot more high performance than uh, my application servers or even my laptop, right, where maybe I'm writing analytical queries. By putting my data transformation logic in the SQL query itself and letting it execute on my database engine, um, I'm going to be able to utilize much faster hardware, you know, faster CPUs, um, a lot more memory typically, and so my queries will execute faster than if they're running on my dinky little laptop, right, that's not as high performance. Now there's obviously downsides to this because you're competing with all the other queries on that system, um, but if your system is underutilized or not running at full capacity, um, and there is right, computing resources available to you on your server, on your database server, right, putting that logic into a SQL query may give you faster results because of that. However, if it's easy for you to get beefy application servers, uh, that can handle doing some of your data processing, it's probably better to do it there. I'll talk about that in the next section about putting your data transformation logic in your application code. 
But before we get to that, I just want to finish up with portability. Um, one of the biggest reasons I like putting my data transformation logic into my SQL queries is because it's easy to reuse that code. And I don't just mean, right, we're using it in other places, but if I need to share that code with teammates who need to execute it, right, it's easy to give them a SQL query and tell them, hey, run this on this database, on this server, and, and they can usually do it. Or if I prefer programming in C Sharp, um, and I have other you know, coworkers who prefer programming in Python, if I keep my data transformation logic in my SQL query, it's very easy to transfer that between different programming languages without having to actually rewrite that logic. Um, so it's a lot more portable. It's also easier for, you know, if a technical product manager or an analyst or anyone else kind of wants to see the logic behind what you're doing with those transformations, um, it's more likely that they're going to be able to understand your SQL query code um, than maybe something that's, you know, programming specific in, you know, a true programming language. So overall, SQL queries are typically my first choice for where I want to put all of that data transformation logic. That's not always the case, and we'll talk about in a second why there might be some cases where putting your, your data transformation logic in your application code is actually a better option. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to talk about this week's sponsor. Popsicle is a modern SQL editor built for teams. Popsicle saves your team time since you can collaborate on queries, visualize data, and share those results. Not only can you share the queries and the results with your teammates, you can also share connections. So forget about having to onboard someone and email them connection strings, right? Or if you're constantly changing databases or you know, getting new servers up and running, managing all those connection strings is a pain. Popsicle allows you to store those connection strings securely. And so all your teammates just kind of need to pick which connection they need from a dropdown list. And speaking of connections, Popsicle works with all major relational databases. Everything from SQL Server to things like MySQL, Postgres, Redshift, BigQuery, Snowflake, and you know anything else you can think of. And not only does it connect to all those different databases, it also works across all platforms, including in your web browser. Popsicle also has lots of great different user features. One of my favorite that I was looking at is parameterization. So not only can you parameterize your queries um, and save those with your team, Popsicle will also allow you to schedule and share the results from those parameterized queries with visualizations and in dashboards. It's pretty cool. If you're interested in giving Popsicle a try, just visit popsicle.com slash BERT. I also have that link down in the description for your free two-week trial of Popsicle Premium. So thank you to Popsicle for sponsoring this video. It's sponsorships like this that allow me to continue making videos for free for everybody to kind of watch and learn. So if you're looking for a modern SQL editor, go check them out. All right, let's continue with our topic of where we put our data transformation logic. So in the first half of the video, we talked about storing that in your SQL queries. Now I want to get to storing that logic in your application code. So one of the times where you may want to do things like transformations in your application code instead of your SQL query um, would be when you have very domain specific problems, right? So think about things like processing XML or having to use recursive queries. Um, a lot of relational databases have those features, but you know, most databases are, are built general purpose. And so if you are going to be doing a lot of things like XML parsing, you might get better performance um, you know, doing that in your application itself. On the other hand, if you're doing something really quick and it's not the fundamental you know, thing you're trying to do, you know, go ahead, do it in, in, in your SQL query if your particular database allows it. Um, but like I said, for heavy hitting stuff, it, you might want to move that to your application code. Another time you may want to put your data transformation logic into your application code is with caching. So if your application is doing lots of transformations over and over again on the same set of data, it may make more sense to just take all that data and bring it from your SQL database server to your application a single time, and then do your filtering or your joining in your application there. It's going to reduce the amount of times that data has to go uh, across the network. And so you may get better performance if you just cache that data locally one time and transform it there. Typically, I find this in applications where there's lots of little transactions. It, it sometimes makes sense to just bring all that data over at once initially. And finally, you may decide to put your data transformation logic into your application code because of cost. I mentioned in the first half of this video that usually your, your database hardware may be higher performance, um, but usually that higher performance comes at a cost. 
um, not just for the hardware, but a lot of database servers are, you know, licensed applications. You pay a lot of money um, for that software to, to be able to do things that you could also do through application code. What that means is doing the same thing in a SQL query can be more expensive, a lot more expensive than if you were to just to do it um, in your programming language of choice. Now, like I said, if your database server isn't at full capacity um, and it makes sense to do those transformations in your SQL query, go ahead, go for it, do it. But if you are struggling, if your database server is struggling, it's getting lots of connections, lots of queries, lots of activity going on at the same time, and you don't wanna stress it anymore, it may make sense to move that over to your application code because it'll be cheaper to run it there, right? Keep the stuff that needs to run on the database running on the database, but take the stuff that could be written um, in a programming language and, and do it there instead. So in conclusion, which option is better? It really depends on your particular scenario. Sometimes it's gonna make sense to put your data transformation logic into your SQL query. That's gonna give you the best performance and that's where you're gonna to wanna to keep the logic. Uh, other times though, it's, it's gonna make more sense to move that code to your application. And so what I kind of wanted to convey with this video is that you really have to look at your problem uh, scenario before you get started, before you write any code, before you write any queries, figure out where it's gonna make sense to put that logic. A lot of times for me, that is in the SQL query itself, that's probably where I put my data transformation logic 80% of the time. Uh, but in certain instances, it will be better to put in your application code. So just something to think about. So thanks again for joining me this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.